In this WP Grid Builder tutorial, I'm going to show you how I created a grid that allows people to sort my content both by categories for my posts, like tutorials, as well as categories for pages on my website. These are my course sales pages. These are not posts, but they are in the same grid in WP Grid Builder as my posts. An interesting thing about pages in WordPress, they don't by default support categories and tags. And I find that strange because I've always wanted a way to organize my pages. And for me, the categories and tags made most sense. Now let's stop for a second and say, well, wait a minute, why doesn't it support categories and tags? And some people will give you an SEO answer and they'll say, oh, because you don't want your pages to rank in Google for categories and tags, you want those to be for your posts only. Well, I'll push back on that and I'll say that you don't want categories and tags indexing in Google at all. In fact, I use my SEO plugin to tell my website, do not index my categories and my tags. And why is that? Well, because on my website, I have a tutorial section and I use silo pages or those hub and spoke pages, right? So for example, for Surecart tutorials, I have a page that shows different post lists. Yes, this is using WP Grid Builder to create these. And I want this page to rank for Surecart tutorials, not my tags for Surecart tutorials. If I go to my tutorials page, and yes, this is also WP Grid Builder. For example, I have the Surecart tag on the left that people can select to see my Surecart tutorials, which means all of these posts are tagged Surecart, but I don't want the tag page to index. Because if I go to the tag page real quick, and you can do that by doing question mark tag equals, and then type in the name of your tag. This is my quote unquote tag page. If I indexed my tags, this is what would be indexed. My surecart tag page, which is also slash tag slash surecart. I don't want this indexed because this isn't a great page. Yes, it's accurate. And by the way, I do use WP Grid Builder to create the archive page. So it's not terrible looking, but I don't want this page to index in Google. I want this one to index in Google. So I've told Google not to index my tag page or my category pages. And instead I focus all of my crawl budget on my tutorial silos. So now that that's out of the way and we're not worried about indexing our tags and our categories, why wouldn't we want to use categories and tags for our pages as well? Makes sense to me. So here are my course pages. These are my sales pages for my courses. And you can see I've given them the category course and I've given them various tags that make sense. So how did I do that if WordPress doesn't support that naturally? Well, I simply added a plugin. That's not something that I normally like to do. I don't normally want to add plugins to my website, but this one is pretty lightweight. And so far it's worked great for me. It's called pages with category and tag. And if I click on view details, this is what it looks like. With that very simple lightweight plugin installed, pages now have categories and tags. And yes, there's probably PHP functions you can put inside of your functions.php file that do the same thing. I couldn't be bothered to figure it out. So once we have categories and tags on our courses or whatever pages you're wanting to put tags and categories on, it's time to go to WP Grid Builder and customize our grid. Here's my grid. I simply called it courses and tutorials, which is aptly named because that's what the grid is on my homepage. My content, I've chosen posts. That's the WordPress term posts. It covers both posts and pages. And under the post types, I've chosen posts and pages published by any author. I have not specifically included or excluded anything. However, under advanced settings, I have chosen to show the following taxonomies. I want to include my tutorial category, my comparison category, my course category, which is a page category, not a post category, and my general tech stack category. These are simply categories. And yes, now they also include page categories, which I simply searched the word course because that's what I named my category and it appeared like normal. I was able to just select it. So that took care of what shows up here inside of my grid. However, I need a way to filter this grid. So I need to use a facet. Facets are a WP grid builder feature that allow you to create various different additions to your grids. For example, the ability to filter the content in your grid, but they also work with third-party tools as well. We won't go into that in this tutorial, but essentially they are things like pagination, search, reset buttons, and in our case, the little options at the top that are going to allow us to filter between our courses and our tutorials. So I created a facet and I called it courses and tutorials. It matches my grid. To achieve the button style that I've created here, all I did was I chose the facet action as filter content. The filter type are buttons. You could have easily changed that to be a drop down or a radio button. 
The data source, again, is posts, and I'm filtering by category. And the terms that I'm including, terms is another word for uh, the included taxonomies, are tutorials and course. I've left mine as an and option, and I've disabled all of these toggles down here. And that's how I've achieved my view courses, view tutorials, or view all courses and tutorials. Now, I am also going to show you my select tool, which is just a facet, and that is on the grid here. I say browse by tool, this is the ability to sort by my tags, which filters my content over here. So for example, if I click on course, notice on the left-hand side, my tags changed. If I go back to tutorials, notice they change again. And that's because these are operating dynamically with my grid and with the other facets on the page to be, well, I guess dynamic is the best word, to be dynamic and only show what's relevant to the grid. So let's take a look at how I set up my select tool here. It's also filtering content and it's also a button. My data source is also posts, but this time it's filtering by tags. I've ordered by choice count, meaning the more tutorials there are, the higher up it would be in the order. I've also left it as and, but I've allowed you to make multiple selections on the tags. And that's because if I come back here and I say, I want to see all tutorials that are related to high level and courses, there's only one. But if I go back to all, I can see that I have high level selected and now I can say, well, I want to see all high level and sure cart tutorials. And sure enough, there's one on my website. So those are the settings that I used for my select tool facet. Another facet is my reset button. To create my reset button, I'll return to all facets. I'll go to reset. And this one's very simple. It's simply facet action reset filters, reset all. And to show you that in action, if I click it, it simply resets all of my facets. The last option that I want to show you is the search bar over here on the top right hand side. That's another facet. I'll return to all facets and I created a separate one for this particular homepage grid that shows courses and tutorials. Down here at the bottom, I have one that searches just my posts on my tutorials page, but I created a separate one that includes courses here for my homepage. This is a filter content facet and it is a search field, obviously. It's also filtering posts. I've given it a placeholder that says search tutorials. It is searching WordPress, right? You can search other tools if you have those installed, but mine is searching WordPress. I've left all of those at default. I believe these are also default. The minimum characters for the search are one, uh, and I've toggled on or kept toggled search relevancy, and that seems to work well for me. So if I return to my search and let's say someone couldn't be bothered to click on the word sure cart or perhaps there were other tutorials down here that weren't showing. Let's say I wanted to search for SureDash. As I type in the word SureDash and hit enter, it automatically loads all of my SureDash tutorials. And then what's really cool is on the left-hand side, I can say, oh, let's see the SureDash and SureMember tutorials. And there you go. I hope that tutorial was helpful to show you how you can add tags and categories to your pages and include them inside of your grids. And I hope that was also helpful in showing you how I created the different facets for use with my grid. I have other tutorials for WP Grid Builder. You can check out my playlist or some of the related content on your screen right now.